today marks a national milestone for the terminally ill. In Victoria, under strict criteria, they can now legally access a deadly dose of medication. And a warning, this story contains confronting material. The ways that I'm likely to die are by slowly suffocating because my lungs fail or starving because my stomach fails. And none of those are ways in which a person can die without a great deal of suffering. 45-year-old Nia has scleroderma, an incurable and excruciating disease. I spent a lot of years thinking about how I might avoid that end of life suffering by taking circumstances into my own hands. Around 48 Victorians a year take their own lives after an irreversible physical decline. Nia stopped thinking of suicide when Victoria became the first Australian state to legalise voluntary assisted dying, or VAD. I don't dream about taking my own life anymore. I am relaxed and I go out more. I socialise more. I spend time thinking about other things. But the criteria is strict. Patients must be adults in the late stages of advanced disease. Two specially trained doctors have to sign off on a prescription for a lethal dose of medication which only one pharmacy in the entire state is allowed to keep. Wherever possible, the patient must take this drug themselves. The laws that we have today are very stringent and will only apply to a very small number of people. Victoria is the 15th jurisdiction in the world with an assisted dying or euthanasia law and its regulations are among the toughest. Sadly, some of the people I met won't qualify under these very strict conditions. More than 100 health practitioners have begun training to assess their patients, but there's still opposition from parts of the medical community. If this legislation goes wrong, then people will die wrongful deaths. You can have the wrong, the wrong diagnosis. You could have a very wrong assessment of life expectancy. You could fail to diagnose depression. You could fail to access good quality palliative care. You could miss subtle coercion from people who regard their loved ones as an asset to be realised. These people who are applying for assisted dying, they're dying anyway. It's just a matter of being able to take some control and die a little sooner and not have to endure the suffering for as long. Across Australia, 39 other attempts to legalise VAD have failed, but WA and Queensland are currently considering laws like Victoria's. Belinda's mum, Maria, was diagnosed with aggressive breast cancer which had spread through her bones three and a half years ago. The oncologist told us that there was so much cancer inside of mum's bone that there was no more room inside the bone marrow for the cancer cells to multiply. The pain became so bad that she couldn't even roll over in bed without screaming. She asked her oncologist, can you help me to go quicker? But there was no legal way to do so. The final hours of Maria's life left her in violent convulsions and racked with pain. Her passing still haunts Belinda. She was making this rasping, choking, rattling sound. And I sat in front of her for a few minutes just letting it sink in because my eyes could not comprehend what I was seeing in front of me. And then came the smell. You know that nice smell that your mum has when you give her a hug? That wasn't there anymore. It was just disgusting. And I was saying to myself, no, mum, she's not there, she's not there, she can't feel anything, she doesn't know what's going on, it's okay. And when she looked at me, it was no longer okay. That was a situation that made my blood run cold. Maria was given morphine, but the relief was short-lived. After that 25-minute period or so of her being settled, her head started twitching again, her feet started twitching again, her breathing became laboured again, and her eyes were rolling around in her head again. She endured this on and off for more than four hours before she died. I think it is really important that we do create a conversation about death and that people know the truth about what happens so that we can make it better. Now, Belinda's walking all the way from Melbourne to Perth, symbolically taking the Victorian law to parliamentarians in her home state of WA. 
It's not about my mum, it's about the other people who will find themselves in the same position in the future and who will have the same limit, limit choices if the law doesn't change. I'm quite confident that scleroderma will be the cause of my death. I don't know whether that will be in five years' time, in 10 or maybe 25. I need this law to be available for me to have peace of mind from now on. Well, Andrew Denton has been instrumental in the fight for voluntary assisted dying in Australia.